Hello comic book fans! Welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Geezers. I am Wild Bill, the Unknown Comic, your host, and the founding father of the show right here. I'm Pete. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? We got uh, another I uh, episode of Inside the Cover today. Another classic, classic book. This one from the 70s. Fantastic Four, number 130. And as Mr. Magoo would say, Oh, 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 you're like, yeah, look, hold it back up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why you look at that? Oh, 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 marvelous. Yes, marvelous. Gotta love it, right? Good art. It's weird because I'm looking, when you pull that cover out, I'm like, I don't think I have it, but I do have it. I just don't remember the cover. It's been a while since yeah. I've looked at my. And this is notable for, it's a Jim Steranko, Joe Sinnott production on the cover. I mean, how. Stomanko, yeah. I don't think I ever. No, not doing Fantastic Four, right? I mean, he did this time because they were in a jam. Yeah, I guess so, right? So, uh, and this one was published in uh, 1972. All right, and uh, this is uh, Roy Thomas, writer, editor, John Buscema, artist, Joe Sinnott, inker, Artie Simic, letter, and Petra Goldberg, the colorist. So, uh, Bill and I, uh, off camera, were talking uh, before we started recording that, in my opinion, one of the MVPs. In Marvel Comics in this time period, the 60s and, and the first part of the 70s, was Joe Sinnott. Because he made everybody's art so damn spectacular. I was reading this this morning, and I love John Buscema. I love him. He's awesome. But you pair him up with a guy like Joe Sinnott, you pair Jack Kirby up with a guy like Joe Sinnott, that's some of the best artwork ever. Ever. Any publisher, any, any era. So, I mean, just look at this. So... Yes, as you can tell, this is a continuation of a story that started in issue number 129, so which basically was the, uh, the, the, the thing getting into a fight with the Frightful Four, uh, who now seemingly have a new member, because Medusa, the Inhuman, who had been in the Frightful Four, she's one of the original members, she turned on them, and then all of a sudden shows up Thundra, the... Uh, Wherever the hell she came from, seven foot tall Amazonian powerhouse, right? That likes the thing. That likes the thing. Well, I mean, she basically what she wants is she she feels where she came from is that the males are the uh, inferior species. So she's really kind of looking for a mate that like a, a male that's not a wimp. That, and so she kind of takes an interest in the beating the thing and winning him over, right? So she joins. Uh, the wizard and the Sandman and the Trapster and Medusa, obviously, has, as you can see, has been captured below by the Trapster. And I'm going to be real delicate with this issue because the bottom staple has uh, seemingly come out. out here. So basically, in the in the previous issue, uh, they do Thundra does beat the thing, knocks him unconscious, and then the Trapster imprisons Medusa in his uh, paste stuff. His gun. Paste Pot Pete, now the traps there, right? His paste crap, whatever the hell. Whatever. What is, so what is that stuff made of? I never even know what I don't that know. He traps her with it. It's yeah. like glue. Right? It's like glue, I guess, right? So now, so here you've got, uh, and they're still not sold on uh, Thundra. They're not really sure this thing is falling apart. But, um, they're not sure of her being a member yet? Yeah, so she keeps She's filling in for Sue? Uh, no, so, Medusa's no? not filling in yet. Okay. Because that, that's coming in the very near future. We'll right. get to that. Getting in a ahead bit. of ourselves. Yes, you are. So, you know, Thundra is like, you know, even though I wanted to, to defeat the thing, uh, to humble him as never before, I now have overlooked him in the heat of battle. There's something in his craggy face, something inherently noble, which nigh makes me doubt my mission here as if. And then the Sandman's listened to all this. He's like, oh, no, you don't, girly. Give me that guy. And he grabs the thing and throws him in the air. Because, you know, the Sandman is not a good dude at all. He's just like... He doesn't like that love child talk. No, no. not at all. <laughs> so he throws the thing in the air. Thundra goes, runs out, grabs him, saves him, and then she goes and attacks the Sandman. And, uh, you know, kind of like a little skirmish ensues there. And uh, so then the wizard tries to calm everybody down. You know, it's like, all right, you know, we must, we must make the backs of the building fall. We have to, you know, finish our mission right now. We are the Frightful Four. So then uh, we... We go ahead to the lair, the island of the uh, the Inhumans, where Johnny Storm, because you notice we haven't talked about Johnny Storm yet, he has seemingly disappeared. He left the Fantastic Four, kind of quits the Fantastic Four because he wants to go find Crystal. Because remember, you know, him because and Crystal... she ran off with Speedy. Well, but not yet. Sort of, not even yet. He doesn't know that, right? So she goes back to the island of the Inhumans because she and Johnny got into a fight, and she doesn't know where she's at with him. And he doesn't know about... 
Quicksilver? He doesn't know about Quicksilver yeah. yet. So he goes and shows up, and he's all pissed off, and the rest of the Inhumans are like, you know, you need to calm down. You can't see Crystal. You know, relax. Yeah, she's with her yeah. other husband right now. Right. Well, soon to be, right? As, as we all know. So here he escapes from the Inhumans. He goes outside because she's being held up in this tower. And, uh, you know... Rapun- they got him in the tower like Rapunzel? What? She's up in the tower with Quicksilver. Oh, I thought like, Human Rap- Torch was up in the tower. No, he's, he knows that she's in the tower. Oh, he's so, going Rapunzel, for Rapunzel, let down your hair, right? So do not need to. I can flame up there. Exactly. So, but they try to stop him, obviously. So what does he do? He goes up underneath the tower, and he starts to... What you can see in this... In this so he's going to picture right he's here. like a woodchuck he's gonna burrow a hole that's exactly what he's doing so he's going straight up the tower with his lava melting you know woodchuck fire. skills <laughs> digging holes through the earth just so, like a woodchuck stand in my garden stand so, in my tower so he goes up and he finds crystal and then he crystal sees alone. she's like oh johnny what are you doing here and then he sees look at him down below he goes what are you doing what's he doing here so again they don't go back to that story till the next issue but basically you know what I'll he answer sees the question what's he doing here Quicksilver was hurt in a battle that's when Crystal discovered him and they brought him back to the island of the humans and she's nursing him back to health but as she's doing that they both kind of fall in love right so with Quicksilver with Quicksilver right All so right. Johnny sees her tending to this guy and he knows who Quicksilver is yeah. so he is like really upset so then we go back to Reed Richards now while all this is going on Reed is back in the in the uh, in the Baxter <clears throat> building, fiddling around with some stuff. He's all upset because you know the, the Johnny Storm left. He's fighting with Sue, you know, because they got the kid Franklin, and they're arguing over his care and all that kind of stuff. And he wants her to take more care of the child and leave the the superheroing to them, and she doesn't want to. So Reed is like a little upset about all this kind of stuff. So of course, then he turns around, and who enters the Baxter building but the Sandman? Yeah. So now him and Reed get into a fight, right? And he's got, so he knocks out the Sandman. In comes the rest of the Frightful Four. They've got the Thing in tow. They've got Medusa in tow. And here you got a nice splash page by uh, Mr. Sinnet and Mr. Busima, right? They've got, now they've got Reed uh, also tied up in Pace Pot Pete's uh, contraption, contra- or tentacle, or whatever you call this stuff. And uh, they're well, glued, they're, they're trapped at the moment. Your Saturday morning cartoon lineup for those of you who are Yeah, two for 10. Uh, so then here we noted then they, they, of course these guys start bickering amongst each other the frightful four so you've got the uh, the trapster and Sandman kind of getting the into wizard. it yep the wizard trying to stop what's going on there but of course they notice that someone comes in and starts to uh, melt uh, the trapster's little stuff that he shoots at and they find out it's the invisible girl so they're melting course. his bonding agent <laughs> yep because of course Sue is here she's here with Franklin she's using her powers of invisibility to intercede in what's going on so she puts I was going to say using her powers for what for yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly what does she pre- she sneaks in invisible what to protect her son her son's there at this fight he's there too yeah so she basically puts Franklin down and she basically says alright wizard down. I know wizard you're you're not a good guy but you, you, you better not be harming a kid so I'm going to put him aside and we will do battle so he basically says we are all civilized here dear lady we'll allow you a moment to set the child aside should we trust this dude I don't think so right you said, <laughs> you said she puts the kid down like, yeah. like you and your pet is no <laughs> Gonna put him down? No, she just puts him aside. Put, there he is. Puts him aside. Yeah, puts him aside. Because you did. I thought you, you came. You gave me some comedy gold there when you said that she put puts him down. down. Oh, yeah, you rewind that. <laughs> <laughs> so of course they start the battle here, right? And uh, there we go. And of course Thundra sees all this stuff going on and sees like the invisible, the invisible girl, invisible woman doing a pretty good job against the other one. She goes, "We need brute force here. Enough of this nonsense." So she rips up this giant machine and and throws it at. Uh, at uh, Sue Richards, and then of course they look and they see little Franklin sitting there all by himself, ready to cry. And of course <laughs> now, of course the wizard's thinking, well, we can use that to our advantage, right? Because of course, and Sue's like, no, you mustn't. Look, I've become invisible again. You can see me. And he goes, just as I knew you would, dear. So he basically used, he teased going after Franklin to get her to, to, to show, show herself. So now he got her in the trapster glue. Exactly. So <laughs> she is now. Boy, I tell you, you must have written this one, right? So yeah, that's exactly what happens. So now the trapster grabs her. And, uh, and then he talks about still he's going to do something to Franklin. The thing wakes up, hears that, and the thing is like, there is no way you're going to mess with little Franklin, right? I'm trap you too, thing. Guess again. Exactly. So he basically, he breaks free. 
Uh, and then you've got Thundra all of a sudden now has a conscience and she's like, wait a second, I didn't join up with you guys to do murder and, and harm little children. So Thundra turns on only one them. kid. <laughs> <laughs> you can smash him. So Thundra turns on them just at the time where the thing breaks loose. It's clobbering time. He goes and breaks free Reed and Sue and Medusa and whammo. It's clobbering time. Mayhem. That's exactly what it is. It's clobbering time. There it is right there. Mayhem ensues. And uh, the Sue Richards uh, does something to the Sandman. So he, all of a sudden, his particles go flying all over the place. She puts like a protective invisible shield around uh, Franklin. Franklin. And then all the, and then Thundra and the Thing get into it again. Oh. So they get into this test of strength here. And it's, it's pretty evenly matched. Reed beats up the wizard, but uh, Thundra actually gives Thing a cheap shot. She gives a knee to the face. Right. And, and then takes off, and she goes. But this isn't over. We're gonna, you know, continue. We're gonna, we're gonna continue again. And the rest of the frightful four are like, all right, we got to get out of here because obviously now it's not going in our favor. But meanwhile, the last page, which is which is amazing, uh, Sue and Reed get into this big, big fight because he's pissed off at her because he's like. Why are you here? You should be home taking care of Franklin. Why would you bring him here into this dangerous situation when I told you you need to go take care of our child and we'll deal with it? And she's basically like, so here, I'm going to read it to you. So he goes, uh, and Reed goes, we would have done equally well in this fight, I'm sure, without the help of a woman who can't put first things first. And she goes, if you mean me, Reed, then you've had your say. Now I'll have mine. I love our son as much as you do, as much as anyone could. But in the heat of battle, you didn't think of me as a member of the team, not even as your wife, only as the mother of your child. So until you can feel you can treat me as an equal, I've made up my mind. I'm taking little Franklin, and I'm leaving. Leaving you, leaving the Fantastic Four. And his response is, good. At least that way our son will get a little attention. Yeah. And she goes, very well then, I'm going. But I want you to know, Reed, that don't talk it don't talk it to death, lady. If you're going to go, then go. And then they leave and, and basically... Uh, so now, yeah, so he's like, <laughs> whatever, good riddance, whatever. I don't want to deal with that now. Now we need to go find Johnny. So that leads to... Uh, you can't find Johnny, you should put him down. <laughs> <laughs> With or without an invisible girl, no matter what happens, the Fantastic Four will go on. So now, this is where it begins, and you brought this up earlier, this is where it begins where Medusa becomes kind of the de facto fourth member of the Fantastic Four because Sue's taken baby Franklin and gone because yeah. her and Reed are fighting. They're now going to go and find the Human Torch, which obviously he's on in Humans Island dealing with that whole situation. And that's... They're going to bring him back into the fold. That's the next issue, right? The whole love triangle between Quicksilver, Crystal, and Human Human Torch really picks up steam on the next issue, and then it's you know subsequent. Then later on, it's Namor and Sue. Yeah, exactly right because <laughs> she falls back to him. Yeah, I mean, there's always been that dynamic between those two. So a lot of these love triangles going on in Fantastic Four over the years. But uh, that is your inside the cover for issue 130. A really fun one. Uh, and again, if you're if you're interested in checking this one out, you definitely got to start with the issue before because that brings the Fightful Four into the equation. The issue after that is the one that centers on the, the love triangle we just talked about. But then a couple issues later. Thundra comes back into the picture for that huge, huge battle with the thing again. At this time, she wants to beat him, and she wants him as her mate. So, and he's kind of, he's not liking that too much. So that's all, I mean, that's the great thing about some of these old uh, series back in the 60s and 70s. You had these, like, storyline arcs that went, you know, multiple, Continued, multiple issues. And, issues. and not across different comics. They yeah, stayed, stayed in one. Yeah, it's not one. like, well, we'll start it in Fantastic Four, then we'll go to Spider-Man, then we'll move over to the Hulk, yeah. then we'll go to the Avengers. No, they used that, to keep them in one, yeah. one title. Not like now. I mean, uh, DC drives me crazy with that stuff now it's like we're even marvel too it's like one storyline starts and it goes across like multiple books you got to go out and buy everything it's just yeah. like, oh my god it's crazy so there you have it so thanks for watching everybody this uh, edition of inside the cover and uh let bill tell you what you should be doing while you're watching click that stuff. like button click the notification bell share this video tell your friends send some comments thank you for your support as always thanks for being here and we know you love comics as much as we do i mean thanks for letting us share our collections with you. That's right. And uh, we will be back again to do it again real soon. So as always, thanks for being here. And uh, as I'm Pete. And for you are Pete. Since when? <laughs> this is a second ago. <laughs> Saying thanks for being here. And we will see you next time.
That's right. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you real soon here with more stuff. I am Pete. And I'm Wild Have Bill. a good one, and happy holidays, everybody. Yes. So take care. Be Bye. good. Bye-bye.